Hello, my name is Vince Sheehan, and today I'd like to talk about The Midwich Cuckoos by John Wyndham, first published in 1957. And this story revolves around the village, Midwich, of the title, um, a sleepy English village, and one day all its inhabitants just fall unconscious. In the middle of what they're doing, they just drop down wherever they are, seemingly asleep, unconscious. No one can kind of get, you know, can uh, contact or communicate with the people in the village or uh, people can't even get into the village because there's an invisible cordon around the village. Once you go past it, you drop down unconscious. Um, even people driving cars and buses go in there, suddenly they're, you know, they're unconscious. Um, Eventually the uh, army become interested and they realise that there's this silver vessel there during this, they call it the day out. Um, and um, that adds to the kind of uh, mystery of this weird event. Then the people wake up in the village and everything seems to go back to normal. Until a little while later when they realise that all the women, all the childbearing aged women um, of the village are all pregnant and of course that causes all kinds of uh, distress all kinds of worry uh, how did this happen you know how did all the women at the same time get pregnant some of the, uh, the the morals of this traditional English village are upset as well uh, but then um, some kind of pillars of the community decide to get together and try and solve this and at the centre of this group is Gordon Zellerby. He's this rather um, grand, old, posh uh, fellow who lives in a manor house. And um, he speaks in this rather high flow and esoteric uh, manner, uh, rather pretentious. But he's also quite funny and uh, eccentric as well in his own way. And he's uh, with the, the vicar and the doctor the village doctor and this chap called Richard, they kind of try and get together to get to the bottom of this uh, day out and uh, who, uh, how these pregnancies happened, you know. Eventually the children are born and they all have blonde hair and these rather weird golden glowing eyes. Um, and uh, that's kind of the end of part one. There's two parts in this book. In part two, we fast forward eight or nine years when the, when the children are uh, growing up a bit and it seems they're rather precocious. They're, uh, they look older than they are. They look like teenagers rather than nine-year-olds. And also they're uh, far more developed intellectually as well. They um, seem to have uh, grasped ideas extremely easily and are kind of uh, flying academically. Uh, by this point, um, they all have their own school in the village, uh, in this place called um, The Grange. And um, it turns out that uh, some they have this weird hold over people in the village. Um, even when they were babies, uh, their mothers couldn't leave Midwich. The baby seemed to have some kind of control over their act the mother's actions. And as I've got older, that hasn't changed. Uh, anyone who seems to have slighted the children in any way or have got in their way, uh, they kind of start beating themselves up, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and it all comes to a head with this, uh, this, this boy who works on the farm. And uh, he, is, uh, he kind of clips one of the children in the road of his car by accident. And, and the, you know, one, this child, one of the day out children with the blonde hair and the golden eyes, he's not hurt or anything. You know, he's probably a little shaken, but that's it. But then this uh, boy and his uh, other friends turn round and uh, focus their energy on this farm boy and... and this poor boy is sent hurtling to his death as he crashes into a brick wall in his car. Um, another time an aircraft comes over and uh, the day out children don't like the look of this so they send this uh, aircraft in a kind of uh, a spin, you know, it's lost control so the occupants have to evacuate. Um, 
and then quite seriously the the boy who died the farm boy his brother decides to seek vengeance but before he can um, the day up children make him uh, shoot himself with his shotgun so in part two of this book things become rather distressing in the village rather um, heightened rather serious and um, you know the villagers descend on this school where the day out children are being taught and they to, you know to go and uh, burn the place down or whatever but the children realize what's happening and they divert their mental energies on this mob and they the mob starts fighting each other and some people are killed and others are put in hospital so it turns out that um Gordon Zellaby and the, uh, the others in the group decide it's a good idea to try and speak to some of these children because they realise how serious this is and how potentially threatening, threatening it is, not just for you know England, but also for the whole world. So um, Bernard Westcott, who's this kind of um, leader of, he's kind of a, a, a military chief in the, um, the kind of intelligence wing of the army, he goes and finds one of the uh, one of the children, and he speaks to them. And it turns out, as Gordon Zellaby has already uh, intuited, that they are a group consciousness. So, if one boy learns something, the rest of the boys learn it. The thirty other boys, whatever. If one boy experiences something, the rest of the boys experience it. Same with the girls. And uh, they know that uh, they're here, as, as the title the cuckoo suggests, to um, kick out the inhabitants of the nest, um, the, the inhabitants of Midwich, and indeed the rest of the country, perhaps the rest of the world, so that they can uh, dominate and take over. So they really are cuckoos in that sense. Um, and it's then that Bernard realises the seriousness of the situation, and indeed Gordon Zellaby and the others as well. Gordon Zellaby, it turns out, um, is actually dying. Um, he's kept it from his uh, friends and his and his wife, uh, and he's also he also lectures at the school to these uh, rather frightening children. Uh, so um, he goes off at the end of the book to um, teach them. One last time, he smuggles in his like kind of audio visual gear because he likes his visuals and his lectures. And it turns out he's smuggled in a bomb. And at the end of the book, he sets the bomb off, you know, kills himself, but also all of the day out children who are such a threat to our existence. And uh, and that's how the book ends. And it is a rather entertaining book built on a great premise. And uh, it really is uh, such a great idea. Uh, really interesting plot uh, rather perhaps you know as you'd imagine very much of its time in the, in the sense of the, the, the way the characters talk and this kind of middle class English way but it's rather charming as well and um, of course it inspired a couple of films you know certainly The Village of the Damned the 1960 film and that was remade in 1995 um, I suppose some of the themes in this book concern a kind of fear for children, um, mind control, unexplained and mysterious pregnancies, um, certainly um, a kind of group consciousness and a gestalt consciousness, which you find in science fiction quite a lot. Um, kind of mob rule as well, the sense of the mob. Um, yeah, there's a lot in this book and it, I do recommend it. Uh, thank you for watching. I've included a slideshow with um, some of the themes and the structure of the book as I see it uh, after this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.